Hello, namaste. Welcome to our vinyasa flow yoga practice today with some physical focus on the shoulders, bringing them into extension, flexion, as well as strengthening. Um, grab a couple of blocks and a strap at least. You may want to also have a pillow and a blanket just in case. And I invite you to start in hero's pose if that works for you, where you can sit either directly on your calves like this, setting the knees in front of you, or to make it less of a bend on your knees, you can sit on one or two blocks stacked underneath your sitting bones in between your ankles, making sure that you're pointing your toes back. So take a moment to get settled into your practice, find a comfortable stillness. And so here we are on the second day of December, 2024 amidst all of the advertising for what you can buy for the holiday gifts. And I tell you, I'm afraid to open my email because I have like 20,000 promotions. I'm exaggerating, of course. And I love that this video popped up in my um, social media feed by Jane Goodall, who reminds us of our yoga practice. She doesn't say it in that way, but Remember that the very first practice of yoga is ahimsa, which is a Sanskrit word that means non-harm, to not harm. And she says, Jane Goodall said, what you do makes a difference and you have to choose what kind of difference you want to make. Every day we live on this planet, we make some impact. So this thing that we're buying, did it harm the environment? when it was made? Was it cruel to animals? Like, was it factory farmed? Was it cheap because of unfair wages or slave labor? If it was ethically made, it might cost a little more, but we value it a little more and waste less. Human waste is horrendous. Remember that we can throw something out in the garbage, but where does it go? To the landfills where it accumulates and creates even more harm to our soil and our water and our planet. It's really important to remember the bigger picture of our consumption habits. And I talk about this because this is how we can live our yoga out in the, our daily lives. Not only just self-love or being kind to each other, which are very important things, but these are actions of love. These are actions of kindness, being conscious of how we impact our planet and how we impact each other's lives in our day-to-day -day decisions, such as what we choose to buy. And so with that, bringing that idea of non-harm ahimsa into our yoga practice today let's practice that within ourselves and let it become something that maybe we focus on outside of this formal practice so starting by checking in you might close your eyes and allow your awareness to gently scan throughout your physical body to observe without judging the different kinds of sensations you're feeling right now. Listening deeply to what your body may need from this physical practice. How can you be kind to your body? As you feel the breath flowing in and out, just letting it flow naturally. What can you notice about your energy? Does a breath feel rushed? Does it feel slow and calm? Does it feel fast? What do you notice about your mind? Do you feel present in this moment in your body? Or is your attention replaying a story from the past? 
or maybe anticipating what's next in the future. Notice any emotions you're experiencing. Taking an honest look at ourselves as we enter our practice. Let's begin to deepen the breath. Can you feel where the inhale is traveling within your body? Take your time to let it go. Open the mouth. Breathing in a little slower. And maybe even sighing it out. Breath by breath becoming a little more expansive, releasing a little more slowly. I invite you to think about someone or something that you appreciate from today. Bringing gratitude into the energy of your practice. And then set your intention of what you're choosing to focus your energy on during this practice and after. And what ways can you practice non-harm or kindness, ahimsa? Thinking of those around you, loved ones, neighbors, people you see on the media. Is there anyone that you may like to dedicate today's practice to as a way of extending care and loving kindness to somebody else? And together, let's open our practice by chanting the sacred sound of Om, which connects us to the vibration at the very center of our Mother Earth and with each other. So let in a deep breath for three Ohms. One way we can practice kindness to our bodies and our minds is by slowing down and consciously balancing our in and out breaths in a practice called Ujjayi Pranayama or Victorious Breath. It helps to calm and focus our nervous system, our minds, and be present in our bodies so that we can be intentional with how we move and place our bodies So as you're slowing down the breath, equally in and out and closing the mouth, create a very gentle whispering sound by softly narrowing the back of your throat. Making sure that you can hear a very gentle whisper to your breath. And start to create a slow, steady rhythm that we're going to move our bodies to. As vinyasa flow is breath-led movement. As we focus quite a bit on the shoulders today, grab your strap and I'm going to invite you into a movement that will help to warm up our shoulders. So as you sit tall, hold the strap between your hands on your lap and pull the strap gently so it's a taut line, not loose. 
and separate your hands wider than shoulders distance apart. If you're feeling really tight in the fronts of the shoulders, go generously wide. And then relax your shoulders slightly back and down, seal in the front ribs, lengthen up through the crown, and let's move to the breath. Keep the arms straight, the shoulders relaxing down, and inhale, raise your arms overhead. You might change the distance between the hands as needed and exhale the arms all the way behind you and down. Inhale the arms overhead, exhale them forward and down. Let's continue for several more cycles of breath. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale up, exhale down. Try to find the spacing between your hands that allows your elbows not to bend as you move the arms up and down, if that's possible, and that allows your shoulders to stay relaxing downward away from your ears, even as you raise your arms up. Let's continue for about four more deep breaths. If your shoulders are getting warmer, you can walk your hands closer together to make it more challenging. And releasing the strap, give your arms a little shake, gently shake your head no, nod your head yes, any kind of movement for your neck and shoulders. Let's make our way down onto hands and knees, tabletop. We'll give the outer wrist a stretch as that's all connected to our shoulders by making fists out of our hands, giving yourself a fist bump and keeping that shape of the arms as you place the backs of your fists on the ground about one foot in front of your knees. Splay your bent elbows apart off the ground and slowly shift your weight forward to the amount of intensity you need to feel the stretch in your outer wrists and forearms. Relaxing your shoulder blades down your back ribs, lengthen your neck. Slightly engaging your abdomen, lengthen your lower back. Three more breaths here. You can even softly move your head around just to make sure that you're not rigid in your neck and shoulders as we stretch here. Shake out your hands. And let's come to tabletop pose with your fingers spread flat, this time spinning out your hands to whatever degree you can stretch the inner side of your forearms and wrists. And let's take a few cat cows with our hands like this. So step your knees a couple of inches behind your hips as you stack your shoulders above your wrists. Breathing in, slowly glide your chest forward and coil it up, roll the shoulders back and down. Breathing out, contract your abdomen, drop your head and round your back. Again, inhale, draw your heart forward, circle your shoulders back and down, lifting the chest. Exhale, pull in your belly, drop your head. And go for maybe three more cycles of cat-cow pose or bitalasana. So we're not only warming up the shoulders here, but also the spine. Relax to a neutral spine. Turn your index fingers to point forward or slightly turned out. Spread the thumbs flat towards each other and tuck your toes, entering downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Spend a few breaths, paddling your feet slowly in place to gently stretch and warm up your hamstrings and calves. You might also shake your head and nod it, just loosening up your neck as you're lifting your shoulders back away from it. You could also explore swiveling your hips side to side, lengthening the sides of your torso, stretching your outer hips. A few more cycles of breath.
Begin to find stillness in downward facing dog, whether knees are bent or legs are straight. Imagine you're creating a flat back as you shift your hips way back and root downward through your heels, firming in the belly, relaxing your neck and rolling your outer upper arms towards the earth. Inhale, come forward to plank pose, top of a push-up. Let's pause here for five deep breaths. Now you could have your legs straight, more rigor, or lower your knees to the ground, but either way, lift the sides of your abdomen, lengthen your neck as you gaze on the ground ahead, rotate your triceps or outer upper arms towards your back wall, and if your legs are straight, press firmly back through the insteps of your feet, engaging the muscles in your legs. Draw your tailbone towards the space between your heels. With an exhale, lift your hips, press your thighs back, downward facing dog. Deep breath. When you've exhaled, walk or jump to the front of your mat, forward fold. Separate your feet at least hips width apart, parallel to each other, and bend your knees generously, reaching your hands behind your lower back, Clasp your hands or hold a strap between them. With knees bent, inhale, lift your chest forward and roll the shoulders further back. Exhale to fold even deeper. For several breaths, you can sweep the mat ahead some more. You can sway the spine. Keep stretching your arms away from your lower back to open up the front of your shoulders. By bending your elbows slightly, also lift your shoulders, creating more space in your neck as you drop your head. Two more breaths. And this variation of Uttanasana, standing forward. Dropping the arms. You might shimmy out your shoulders. Bend your knees. And with a slow breath or two, roll your spine upright like you're stacking one vertebra at a time. Lifting your head last, circling your shoulders forward and up, and exhaling them back, hand down, standing tall in mountain pose, Tadasana. Let's join the hands in prayer at heart center in Padasana, connecting to the intention you have for your practice and bringing that into the energy of our movements and postures. Starting with sun salutation C, a way of offering gratitude to the sun, Surya Namaskar. As you inhale, sweep your arms forward and coil your chest up, Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale, bow forward from your hips. Place your fingertips on the ground and inhale, step your left knee behind you, kneeling lunge, look up. Holding your breath, step back to plank pose. As you exhale, lower your knees, then chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slither forward and draw your shoulders back and down, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Exhale, pressing up to plank pose, legs straight or knees down. Lift your hips back to downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb, lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow. Press down to your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms and rise into a gentle back bend. Exhale, gather your palms in prayer at heart center. One more, second side. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Plant the fingertips. Inhale, step right knee back, looking up. Hold the breath as you step to plank. Exhale, lower knees, chest and chin. Inhale, slither forward to cobra. Pressing up to plank first, firm the belly. Then downward facing duck. Inhale, step right foot beside right thumb. Lower your left knee, look up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and bow. Rooting down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands together, Padasana. Let's continue to warm up our whole bodies and offer gratitude to the sun with sun salutation A, 
connecting movement to breath. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. This time, press your hands on blocks, your legs or the ground. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward to half forward fold. Carefully step to plank pose. This time, as you exhale, firm in the belly, shift forward and graze your elbows by your ribs, lowering halfway down into Chaturanga Dandasana. Lower all the way down for Cobra or flip your toes here and draw the shoulders back in upward facing dog. The latter is a deeper back bend. Exhale to downward facing dog. Cultivate stillness as you steady your eyes on one spot for two more deep breaths. When you've emptied the second breath, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Inhale, press to lengthen to half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Breathing down. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands together in prayer. Let's continue once more. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen forward. Walk to plank, jump to Chaturanga or lower knees, chest, chin. Decide what's appropriate. Continue through your vinyasa. And pause in downward facing dog for two deep breaths. When you've emptied the second, walk or float to the front of your mat. Inhale, all about with the nasana, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands in prayer. So continuing our sun salutations, we'll move into Surya Namaskar B. Please bring your feet together to touch, preparing for chair pose. Slowing your breath down and practicing ahimsa as we connect our movements to our breaths. Let's go through two rounds of Surya Namaskar B. So prepare by emptying this breath. As you inhale, bend your knees together, sit back towards your heels in chair pose, Utkatasana. As you exhale, shift your weight forward and bow, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen to Ardha Uttanasana. Step or float back into your version of Vinyasa. Now, when you arrive in Downward Dog, keep your hips leveled and inhale, raise your right leg back. Exhale, step the foot gently beside your right thumb. Spin the left heel down. Inhale, rise to Warrior One. Ride your exhalation all the way down into your vinyasa. From downward dog, keep your hips leveled. Inhale, raise the left leg back. Exhale the foot gently beside left thumb. Drop the right heel. Inhale, rise, warrior one. Exhale all the way down, vinyasa. Downward dog, pause as you slow down your breathing. Take rest if you need it. Staying here for three to five breaths as you cultivate stillness and focus. When your breath sounds smoother and more balanced, empty it before you walk or float to the front of your mat. Feet together, forward fold. Inhale, press into half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend your knees into chair pose. Exhale, rise, mountain pose. Last time, inhale, Utkatasana chair. 
Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale, half fold. Insert your vinyasa here. From downward dog, inhale, raise your right leg. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Exhale, all the way down, vinyasa. Continue at your own pace to your left side. Pausing in downward dog for three to five breaths. When you're ready, empty your breath before you walk or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. And let's continue in chair. We're going to start to twist to the right side, little by little, breath by breath, twisting chair. Try to keep your hips lower than your heart, broadening your chest, slide your shoulders down your back. And if you peek at your knees, make sure that they're each equidistant to the front edge of your mat so you're not twisting at your hips. You're twisting at your waistline. One more cycle of breath in Parita Utkatasana. If you can sit a little lower, inhale chair, hook your thumbs overhead, exhale rise, standing back bend. Pressing your hips forward, lift your heart and draw the shoulder blades down your back. Inhale, chair. To your left, exhale, start to twist. One more deep breath. Sit a little lower if you can. Inhale, arms overhead, chair. Switch the hook of your thumbs. Exhale, standing back bend, press the hips forward, coil your chest up. And from here, I invite you to step to face the wide width of your mat, really wide stance. So if you open up your arms, your ankles are pretty much right under your wrists. I'm not going to mirror you here. So from your right hip, turn out your right leg 90 degrees. Turn in your left leg 45. Align your right heel to intersect the arch of your left foot and bend your right knee just above the heel. Press the outer edge of the left foot down. Wrap the right glute and sitting bone under you. Firm the top of the left thigh bone back. And opening your arms, relax the shoulders. Steady your gaze, just pass the right hand for five deep breaths in warrior two. Straighten both legs, turn in the right leg, 45 degrees. Turn out the left leg 90 degrees. Align left heel to arch of right foot. Bend the left knee just above the heel. From the outside edge of the right foot into the earth. Wrap the left outer hip under you. Press the top of the right thigh bone back. And then open your arms. Relax the shoulders. Steady the gaze. Just pass your left hand for five deep breaths. Virabhadrasana two.
With an exhale, cartwheel your hands down to the floor, add a vinyasa or cat cow, or hold plank a few breaths. Let's meet in downward facing duck. Downward facing dog, inhale, raise the right leg. Exhale, step the foot beside right thumb, drop the back heel, warrior one. And take a moment to have your feet wide enough apart. So as you bend the front knee just over the ankle and straighten the back leg, pressing the outer heel down, you can square both hips to equally face forward while slightly lifting your frontal hip bones. Back stroking both arms, either hold a strap between the hands or interlace your fingers. Humble or devotional warrior. As you breathe in, coil your chest up. As you breathe out, start to bow forward little by little, either resting your belly on your front thigh or bowing to the inside of the leg. Keep drawing your right hip back, relaxing your neck. And you stretch your arms away from your lower back. Checking in, how is your breath? How are you integrating the practice of kindness here, ahimsa? Start to rise all the way back to a diagonal, degasana, and shift your weight onto your right foot. Warrior three, you can keep the hands clasped behind you. You could place your hands down on blocks. Make sure you're flexing your left foot as you turn your left outer hip to face the ground. Draw your right outer hip back. Lengthen your torso forward. Lift the sides of the belly. Virabhadrasana three. As you lower the left knee to the ground, bring your hands both to the left side of your front foot. Walk your right foot to the right, and let's prepare for lizard lunge. So I'm going to invite you to backstroke your right arm, bend the left knee, and catch hold of the back foot. If it's hard to reach that foot, you could prop your left hand on one or two blocks to make it easier. You could also use a strap to lasso that foot if needed. Now, once you have that foot, you can decide if you want to splay open your right foot and flex the foot leaning on the outer edge of it, which will deepen the stretch into your IT band region, or keep the right foot flat, toes pointing forward. You might be able to come down onto your left forearm. So as you're reaching hold of that back foot, we're opening the front of your right shoulder. Be mindful of your left shoulder. Can you draw the left shoulder blade down your back ribs and press off the floor to create space in your shoulder joint? All right, let's listen for four more breaths. Slowly step back for a vinyasa, cat cow, or hold plank a few breaths, or straight to downward dog. Downward dog, pause and notice how your body is responding. Feel your energy by observing your breathing. Bringing that practice of non-harm or ahimsa as we approach side two. Inhale, sweep your left leg back. Exhale, step the foot gently beside your left thumb, drop the right heel. Inhale, rise to warrior one. So have your feet wide enough sideways so you can bend the front knee just over the ankle. Straighten the back leg, press the outer heel down while squaring both hips to face forward and slightly lifting your frontal hip bones. 
And then back stroke your arms to clasp your hands, maybe the opposite thumb on top, or hold a strap. As you breathe in, coil your chest up. Then start to fold forward, humble or devotional warrior. Remember to keep drawing your left hip back, relax your neck, and stretch your arms forward. Start to rise to a diagonal, leaning forward. As we enter warrior three, you can keep your arms like this or reach for two blocks in front of you. Flex your right foot as it leaves the ground, creating a horizontal line from the crown of your head to your right heel. Turn your right outer hip to face the earth and draw your left outer hip back as you lift the sides of your belly. Tune in for a few more breaths. Vira Badrasana three. Slowly step your right knee to the ground and place both hands on the right side of your front foot. Walk your front foot to the left, lizard lunge. And as you bend the right knee, back stroke the left arm to catch hold of the foot. See if you need to place a block or two under your right hand to reach. Maybe you come down to your forearm. Maybe you add flexing your left foot and splaying the thigh open to lean on the outer foot. Pay attention to your shoulders here. As you're holding your back foot, feel your left shoulder rotating back. Draw your right shoulder blade down your back. Let's listen for four more deep breaths. Either graduate into a vinyasa, cat cow, hold plank, or go back straight to downward facing dog. Pause and observe the effects of how you approached your asanas, your poses. Please come down to your knees and let's further open up the shoulders in the back side, like your trapezius, your, um, your triceps, your outer upper arms, and your upper back. So placing two blocks on their second level, medium height, across the top of your mat touching, step your knees about a foot behind the blocks and extend your arms forward. From your shoulders, spin your outer upper arms downward to spread the shoulder blades apart as you press your shoulder blades down your back. Keep doing those two actions as you bend your elbows and place them shoulders distance apart on the blocks. Press your fingertips into each other and step your knees back a couple inches behind your hips. Tracing your thumbs down the back of your skull, down the back of your neck, let your head fall. Keep the elbows exactly where they are. And draw the shoulder blades further back, sinking your chest as you broaden it. Firm your belly in towards the back, not dumping the belly. And draw your sitting bones back. About five more breaths. Keep wrapping your triceps downward, pressing the shoulder blades back, and keeping your elbows no wider than shoulders distance apart. Slowly lift up and off the blocks. Set the blocks aside and let's prepare. For dolphin pose, we have two inversions. First is dolphin, second is either dolphin or a supported headstand for those of you that are free of any neck issues and wanna give it a try. 
So set up your arms similarly. Wrap the triceps down, press the shoulder blades down the back, bend your elbows exactly shoulders distance apart and interlace your fingers. Press your outer wrists and elbows into the ground and step your knees back, draw the shoulders back, tuck your toes, deep breaths. When you're ready, press down to your forearms and lift your hips up, press your chest back towards your shins and if possible, walk your feet forward, staying in this pose for five to 10 breaths before you lower to rest in child's pose. Now, if you wanna spice it up, if it's available, you can bring your feet together to touch. From there, you can lift one leg straight up as you square your hips and point or flex the foot. You could try one leg up on this round and the opposite leg up on the second round or switch here. Keep your head low to the ground when you're done. And when you arrive in child's pose, you might wanna stretch your neck by leaning one ear to the floor and just letting the arms slide back by your sides. Rest for a couple of breaths and observe your body. When you're ready for round two, either take dolphin pose again, or if you are free of neck issues and wanna give the steps to headstand a try, set up your arms exactly the same way, triceps rotating downward, shoulder blades down the back. And as you press down with your outer wrist, bring the crown of your head to the floor. So the back of your head is lightly supported by the inner webbing of your palms. Walk your feet forward, press down with the forearms to lift the shoulders and start by slowly lifting one leg solidly straight as you flex the foot, tilting the pelvis slowly upside down until you can raise the other leg. Bringing the feet together, press the insteps of your feet towards the sky, stretch the tailbone towards your inner heels, draw your navel towards your spine, and seal in your front bottom ribs lengthening your neck by pressing the ground actively away with your forearms as you lift the shoulders up away from the neck. Five to 10 breaths before you lower to child's pose. In Sanskrit, supported headstand is called Salamba Sarvangasana. Oh, excuse me, it's Shirshasana. And when you're ready to lower to Balasana, child's pose, you might rest the opposite ear to the ground to stretch the other side of your neck as you rest your arms down by your sides. Observing your breath, your mind, your body. From here, let's roll up slowly. And prepare for our final three back bends, starting in bridge pose. Setu Bandha Sarvangasana. Set your feet in front of you, hips distance apart. If you'd like to add more stabling support for your lower back, grab a block and find the width of the block, maybe the skinniest or the medium width, to firmly hug between knees and thighs so that your knees are separated, hips width closest to that. Slowly, Lower down onto your back. When you have lowered, bring your arms down by your sides and slide your feet back until you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips, but not quite. Ground the backs of your shoulders, press firmly through the four corners of each foot and tilt your chin slightly back, preparing to lift your hips and stay lifted and bridge pose for five to 10 breaths. So when you're ready, Lift the hips and stretch the fronts of your thighs forward. Slide your upper arms closer together. Keep your elbows not bent so the arms are straight. If your hands touch, you might clasp them. Energetically, drag your heels back, not visibly moving your feet. As you spin your inner thighs slightly towards the ground, stretching the fronts of your thighs forward. 
Deep breath. When you're ready to come down, use a slow exhalation to gently lower upper back, middle back, tailbone last. And just let the pelvis rest on the floor as you observe your body for a couple breaths. Now for round two, you might follow me into the stages of entering upward facing bow and really just listen to your body Letting it know, letting you know at what stage to stop and hold for five to 10 breaths. So for upward bow, legs are sa same setup as bridge pose. Extend your arms towards the sky, spin your triceps forward, press the shoulder blades down your back and bend your elbows towards the sky. Flex your wrists and place your fingertips your palms flat on the side of your ears. Making sure you to splay your elbows wider than shoulders distance. If they start to splay, you can walk the hands wider apart, make it play out the hands. Then you can lift the hips like this, and you can stay lifted. Or bring the crown of your head to the floor. You could stay in that step, or press through your hands and feet and lift the head. Five to ten breaths. Urdva Dhanurasana. When you're ready, take the steps down in reverse. Pause for a couple of breaths. Feel how your body's responding. For your last back bend, you could take bridge pose, upward facing bow, or any of the stages to it, or take upward facing bow a step further and come down to your forearms. If the latter, flip the palms face down and press up to the crown of your head. Then place your elbows on the floor, shoulders distance. Then push off the forearms to lift the head and you're in it. Five to ten breaths. Some options, you could straighten the legs, making sure your feet stay parallel. This time when you've finished your last back bend, let's meet in Supta Baddha Konasana. Bending your knees apart and dropping the soles of your feet together as you lie to rest flat on the ground. For grounding support, you could place the weight of a blanket or a pillow over your pelvis if you have one. And to help tune inward, you could rest a hand at your heart center and a hand at your lower belly. Let's enter another breathing regulation or pranayama to invite cooling down the rest and digest part of our nervous system. Breathing into your belly, let it rise for five counts and breathing out through your mouth, soften the belly for seven counts. Let's try a few. Empty this breath to prepare. Inhale five, four, three, two, one, exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, five, exhale, seven, 
Try three more cycles on your own. And when you're ready, let go of controlling your breathing. Notice anything you feel. And continue to observe yourself, especially internally, as we enter a few last cooling postures. Placing your hands on your outer thighs, draw your knees together, then wrap your right leg over your left leg to prepare for a supine spinal twist. Slide your hips towards the right side of your mat and slide your right arm wide on the ground. Lift your feet, then keep the right shoulder on the earth as you slowly drop your knees to your left side. You could catch your legs with your pillow or blocks. If you need a deeper stretch in your lower back while you're here, you could place the left palm on your right outer hip. And as you exhale, press away your right outer hip tilting it gently towards the front of your mat. Slowly unwind to center and switch the left leg over the right. Slide your hips towards the left side of your mat and open your left arm wide. Grounding your left shoulder, lift your feet, slowly dropping your knees to the right. If needed, deepen the release in your lower back by pressing your right hand against your left outer hip. Coming back to center, splay your knees apart into happy baby or straddle the legs wide, maybe clasping the big toes. Either way, ground your tailbone head and shoulders. Gently roll yourself up to sit, preceded forward fold. Separate your feet hips distance. Optional to place a strap around the balls of your feet. If you tend to round the shoulders, it gives you a little more leeway to be able to relax them. Flex your feet and press the insteps forward. Then root down through your sitting bones and sit up a little taller as you breathe in. Little by little as you breathe out, hinge forward from your hips. Some of you might clasp your big toes, just as long as you're not rounding your shoulders or back. Paschimottanasana. And as you press down to your pelvis, lead with your chest, inhale to slowly rise. I invite you now into Shavasana. Lie down, splay your arms and legs apart. Use props as you might need to be comfortable and close your eyes. Letting go of doing anything, letting go of controlling your breath. Allow yourself to remain present 
as you lie still for the next few minutes before we sit in meditation. And with eyes still closed, bring your awareness back to your body. Observe how it's feeling now. Listen to how your body wants to begin waking up and gradually start to move and stretch it. (coughs) Slowly turn over to your right side resting your head and notice the quality of your breathing. How does your energy feel now? And then slowly begin to lift your body into a comfortable way to sit where you can feel grounded, alert and relaxed. As you prepare to meditate for five minutes, You might place your hands in a mudra that supports tuning inward, such as Gyan Mudra, where you rest the palms face up on your lap and bring the thumb and first fingers to touch like this, or stack the right palm face up over the left palm face up on the center of your lap as the thumb tips gently touch. And choose to either close your eyes 
or steady a gentle downcast gaze. Let's begin. To help bring your attention to the present moment, you might rest your attention very softly on your breathing in one particular spot on your body. If you lose the breath and your attention goes off somewhere, once you've noticed that you've awakened, then you can come back to your breathing. Let your focus feel relaxed, not forced. Notice how your mind and heart feel now. And so we leave our formal yoga practice to enter our living daily yoga practice, how we apply ahimsa in our daily lives. And especially as we move through the holidays and might be buying gifts, asking ourselves the questions such as how Am I impacting the world, the environment, with what I choose to buy? How am I impacting other people's lives with what I consume? Let's start to bring our practice to a close by offering gratitude to someone or something you appreciate. I offer gratitude to Jane Goodall, who and just shares so much compassion to her life and what she shares with the world. Remember your intention for this practice. And remember to whom you dedicated it. 
Let's join our voices in three chants of Om, let in a deep breath. light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.